I read in the one of the newspapers today that UCT now has in its physics department a dilution fridge, and this you know it just fascinates me. The nerd in me, the geek in me, a fridge that can cool things down to 122 times colder than the known naturally coldest place in the universe, and the boomerang nebula. Ha! I want I want to play for a sports team called the Boomerang, boomerang Nebula 11. And it is officially the coldest place in Africa. Professor Mark Blumenthal is an associate professor in the Department of Physics. Hello, Mark. Hi, good afternoon. How long would it take for my Vintuk draft to cool to an acceptable temperature if I put it in warm? Acceptable temperature, right. So that's uh, at 8 millikelvin. Okay, if you would be starting from room temperature, the entire fridge and the beer would take around three days to get to that temperature. Three days of constant cooling. Okay, so <laughs> it's quicker to put it into my, into my DeFi at home then. Well, no, your DeFi at home is not going to get it anywhere close to this temperature. If you want to cool it down to the temperature you have in your um, DeFi at home, it would take more or less a similar time. Oh, okay. The thing about the fridge is it's, it's the power in it is to get to the low temperatures, not the speed at which ah, it can actually okay. cool. And why do you want it? I mean, let's let's be vaguely scientifically serious about this. Why do you want it to, to get down to those incredibly low temperatures? Well, the fridge has been installed in a nanoelectronics lab in the Department of Physics, and we're focusing primarily on the transport of um, electrons, understanding how electrons move. And really what we're after is trying to capture single electrons. Now, you can take an analogy. Imagine you've got a very, very small tweezer and you want to be able to capture a molecule of water. Now, if your water is bubbling away in a pot, that becomes very, very difficult. If you just have your water sitting, sitting perfectly still in a pot, it's much easier to capture that molecule of water with the special tweezer. It's a similar thing with the electrons. We cool them down to such a temperature that they basically become stationary. And in that point, we can actually capture them and begin to manipulate excuse me, manipulate them. Manipulate them to what purpose, Mark? Right, so there are three more or less applications we can focus on here. The one that we're looking at is um, uh, quantum computing. So, for example, if you can capture a single electron, <clears throat> an electron has the ability to encode a zero and one like you do with a transistor, that is via something known as the spin of the electron. So if we can capture a single electron, we can actually begin to manipulate them in such a way that they can represent a binary zero and one, as we have in standard transistors on a computer. Another application is actually uh, quantum cryptography. So that is the ability to send information without anybody being able to eavesdrop on that conversation. And that is, if you have single electrons, you can actually produce single photons. And photons are electromagnetic waves, really, that carry information. So if you're sending a signal by single photons, the minute someone eavesdrops on your conversation, you know immediately. It becomes a foolproof method. So we're talking about technology that, that, that's not going to appear on your desktop or in your home in the next 10 years. We're talking about pioneering fundamental research. And then the third application I mentioned, the three main one, is actually for a new standard for electrical current. So, of course, things like current and resistance and time and length are all held as standards around the world. And we all agree around the world what a meter is, what a kilometer per hour is, what a second is. And at the moment, there's no standalone definition for electrical current, which is just charge per unit time. But if we're moving a single electron, which is a single unit of charge, we can actually then define very accurately what this current is. And this has implications for measurements and standards around the world. Oh, that is just so fascinating. Quantum quick, crypt, quantum cryptography. Wow. Yes. And, and let's, let, let me finish as I started, being incredibly foolish. And, I mean, how careful do you have to be around a fridge which is that cold? Is, is there any risk that you put your finger in it and your finger disappears <laughs> immediately? No, the, you, the way the fridge is designed is that it has to be very well insulating from the ambient temperature around it. So once the fridge has been closed up, it's basically hermetically sealed. Okay. There's no way any air or anything can get in. And and the outside of the fridge is warm to, to the touch of i.e. room temperature. But right down in the middle of the fridge, which is a mere, let's say, 30 centimeters at max away, you're sitting at um, 0 0.008 degrees above absolute zero, which I must just tell you all, your listeners is... It's physically impossible to achieve absolute zero. You have to remove every last atom.
atom in the universe to get to absolute zero, and that fridge is 0.008 degrees above that. So it's a really a real engineering feat, and we're very pleased and proud to have this facility here in Cape Town. Uh, student opportunities are great, learning opportunities are wonderful, and hopefully we can partake in international level level research as well. Uh, it's just so lovely to hear that. Professor Mark Blumenthal, who is an associate professor in the Department of Physics at UCT, I mean, so much of the conversation around university campuses at the moment is a very negative one, a very depressing one, one related to protest and violence and so on, and, and to, to be just informed in that remarkably articulate way about this extraordinary research that is happening it was very, very welcome. Thank you, Mark. John Matham on Cape Talk. It's five o'clock. <laughs> This, this is Eyewitness News.